Thank you. That was horrible. Now then, there was once a servant called Stan, who worked very hard for three whole years, but his master never gave him any money. And on top of that, after the three years, the horrid master came over to him and said, Um, I don't like you anymore, so go away. But you haven't paid me anything yet, said Stan. Oh, very well then, bloodsucker, said the master, and gave him three bits of fluff and kicked him out of the door. But poor Stan, who didn't know much about money, thought three pieces of fluff was a good thing. He put them into his purse and said, Wonderful! Now I have a purse full of fluff, people will think I'm a millionaire. And Stan went uphill and down dale and sang and jumped to his heart's content. And he was going by some woods when he saw a little elf sitting under a tree. Hello, little elf! What are you doing? Uh, nothing. Just sitting under a tree. What's happening with you? Well, I'm off on my travels. I've got three years' wages in my purse. Cool. How much is that? You must be a millionaire. How much? I'll tell you how much. Three pieces of uh, 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 fluff. <sighs> said the elf. Oh, I dream of having even one piece of fluff, but three pieces of fluff. Oh, what can I do with that? I could make a little fluffy hat and a little pair of fluffy slippers. Ooh, set me up a treat for the winter, that would. And as Stan had a good heart, he gave all his fluff to the little elf. Aha, said the little elf. I see you have a good heart. So I will grant you three wishes. One for each piece of fluff. <gasps> Aha! cried Stan. You must be one of those elves who can grant wishes. <laughs> you can't get much past me. OK, wishes. Let's go. Um, three wishes, right. Well, uh, I wish, first of all, I wish for uh, uh, a bow and arrow that will always twang, always hit anything I aim at. And secondly, for, 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 oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? Uh, a fiddle. And when I play that fiddle, everyone who hears it will be forced to get up and dance. And, and don't go away. And, and thirdly, thirdly, uh, come on, Stan, this is important. Um, yeah, yeah. I wish, right, that if I ask anyone a favour, he will have to do what I ask. All that you shall have, said the elf. Ding! And Stan found he was holding a bow and arrow, a fiddle, and a piece of paper with writing on it that said, do what Stan says or the elves will come and get you. How about that for a bit of spooky magic, said the elf. And he disappeared in a puff of blue smoke. <gasps> <coughs> well, thank... Oh, he's gone. Well, they're not as good as three pieces of fluff, but uh, they'll do me, said Stan, and went merrily on his way. And as he walked and skipped and jumped and turned somersaults until his trousers fell off, Stan heard a bird singing beautifully. Beautifully! Beautifully! And as he watched, Stan saw the bird start a song that was even lovelier. Even lovelier! Even lovelier! Oh, poor oh, uh, Suddenly! Stan smelt the most horrible smell ever. You know that smell when you get your socks and you're sick in them, and then you put them on, and then you run outside and play football for three weeks, and then take your football boots off and stand in a dung heap for a year, and then you're sick in them again, right? Well, this smell smelt even worse than that. But what we know, and what Stan didn't know, was that this was exactly what a witch smelt like. So he couldn't tell there was a witch nearby until he walked right into her. <laughs> Watch out, you clumsy great mabas! Oh, I am sorry. Nice old lady, Stan said, as he wondered why a nice old lady had orange eyes, a long goat's beard, blocks of wood in her mouth where her teeth should have been and smelt like no one had cleaned out the lab for a year. 
She was standing, looking up at the tree, where the bird was singing so gorgeously. So gorgeously! So gorgeously! You see that bird singing? Said the witch. Yes, nice old lady. Well, do me a favour and kill it, would you, dearie? Because I can't stand nice music. No, said Stan. So the witch punched him and said, You'd better kill it, bum face, or I'll turn you into a maggot. Yeah, then I'll eat you, and then I'll turn you back into a person, and you'll be inside my tummy. Ha! And even if you do get out, you'll be covered in witch stink, and you'll never have any friends, and then I'll eat you again. <coughs> Stan was terrified. His knees knocked together, and his breakfast did a cartwheel. But he hit on a clever plan. Although he had never used a bow and arrow before, he took aim and shot. Bang! hoping he would hit the tiny bit of twig in between the bird's feet. And the bird would just lose its balance and fall down and not get hurt. And he hit the twig exactly where he wanted to, because it was a magic bow and arrow. And the bird fell onto some soft moss below the tree, surrounded by prickly thorn bushes. Ha ha ha! Thanks, Titch, said the witch. And she dropped down onto her knees and started to crawl into the thorn bushes to get the poor bird. Here, birdie, birdie, lovely birdie, birdie, come and get scrunched up by the lovely old witch. <laughs> That's me. And she licked her warty lips. Oh, lovely and warty. As she thought of the meal ahead. Well, Stan didn't want the poor bird to end up in the horrid witch's tongue. So when he saw that the witch was right in the middle of the thorns, he picked up his brand new magic fiddle and began to play. At once, the witch's heels flew up in the air. Up and down, she began to jump and squeal. And her teeth flew out and flew back in again, upside down. The more Stan played, the faster she danced. The thorns tore the witch's long underdrawers and pulled out half her beard and scratched and scratched her all over. Oh, oh dear, oh dearie me, cried the witch. Oh, leave the fiddle alone. Oh, stop, I hate music. I hate dancing. Stop, oh, ouch. Oh, that was serious. Stop that fiddling and I'll give you a whole purse full of gold. All right, said Stan. And he took the purse of gold, even though he'd rather have had some fluff, and went happily on his way. The witch collected the bits of her beard off the thorns, stuck them back on, with spit, and ran to the nearest town to look for the judge. Oh, uh, my lord judge, uh, your loveliness, your, uh, your handsomeness, she said when she found him. I'm a nice old lady. Pooh, uh, help, ain't you a witch? Uh, no, 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 I just fell in the canal. <laughs> um, uh, now, I'm a nice old lady, right? And a horrid young man has stolen my purse of gold. Aha, uh -huh, said the judge. A young person. Oh, well, he's obviously guilty. All young people are always guilty. And he sent his soldiers after Stan, and they dragged him before the judge. I didn't do anything, said Stan. That's what you'll think, said the judge. For one thing, you are young, and all young people are trouble. So I order you to have your head chopped off right now. Ha, 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 said the witch. There you see, now you're going to get it. But Stan had thought of a clever plan, so he wasn't frightened and walked very calmly to the square outside the court where he was to be executed. The square was jam-packed full with people because people were a bit strange in those days and they thought watching people have their heads chopped off was good fun. And the witch punched past everyone right out of the way so she could sit on the very front row. And even then, she watched with binoculars so she wouldn't miss anything. Oh, this is going to be great. It is, yeah. Oh, look at that axe. Oh, that's so sharp, it could give you a haircut just by looking at it. <laughs> right, any last requests, the judge said to Stan. And don't ask for anything stupid like, you know, not to have your head cut off or something. No, I, uh, I just asked to be allowed to play a last tune on my fiddle, said Stan. Ah, no, screamed the witch. Don't allow it. But Stan gave the judge the piece of paper from the elf, so the judge knew he had to do what Stan asked. Stan picked up his fiddle and played the first note. Everyone began to quiver, shake, and they raised their legs in the air. 
and the executioner let go of Stan and, and, and flapped his arms out, ready to dance. And the witch yelled, oh, my poor teeth, oh, tie me up, hold me down. But at the next note, they all began to dance, leaping and bouncing, and the judge and the witch were jumping the highest. Old and young, fat and thin, were springing and hopping like peas on a drum. All the dogs of the town, bark, bark, ran to see what was going on, bark, bark. And they got up on their hind legs, bark, bark, and capered about. And the longer Stan played, the higher the dancers bounced. So they banged their heads together and began to shriek and bark terribly. The judge screamed, young person, I will give you your life if only you will stop this fiddling. So Stan took pity on them and put his fiddle away. And instantly, all the people and the soldiers and the dogs crashed to the ground in a heap. And Stan went away happy and free. Except he was a bit disappointed to have so much money and not one bit of fluff. <sighs> so loud.